Sure. Um, to preface my presentation, my name is Bethany. I'm a senior, and I decided that I wanted to work in the arts nonprofit. So I got a job interning at the MFA. And I really, if you guys watch the show Girls, I really thought I would get to be like Marnie and get to work on putting up the different displays and doing, you know, curational stuff and working with artists and like all sorts of interesting behind the scenes stuff. And after about two weeks there, I realized that I was a lot more like this guy and I wasn't doing anything. So what was it like working at the MFA? Um, my job when I was there was in the rotunda, which is kind of the central area, and my job was to direct lost people around. Um, unfortunately, I am terrible with directions. Any of my friends that have ridden in a car with me will tell you I don't know where I'm going. And the MFA is really um, kind of like a big glorified maze. They don't want you to be able to find your way out because they want you to stay and look at all the art. But um, having someone who's bad at directions direct people around didn't really work. And um, you know, to put on top of that, my coworkers were all kind of in their 70s and 80s. They were retired women. They had amazing, amazing life experiences. They were, you know, lawyers and politicians and heirs to distant kingdoms. And they were the coolest ladies. And they were even worse at directions and remembering where things went than I was. There was um, <laughs> this one day where I was working with um, one of the ladies, and someone came in and asked for an exhibit that I'd never heard of, and she gave her directions to it. So I looked it up in the computer. I was like, wow, this is so weird. Why haven't I heard of, you know, this, you know, kind of old impressionist exhibit? It had been closed for 30 years, and she was not really with the program anymore. Those are my coworkers, and that was the MFA. And um, it took a lot to decide that I was not going to be getting what I needed from the experience of Capstone at the MFA. And once I realized that, I had to find a second internship, which I found at the Puppet Showplace Theater, which is a really small children's theater in Brookline. You can get there on the T. Um, for some size comparisons, that's like half of the MFA in one photo. Only the front half, it goes back a couple of miles, I think. And this is the Puppet Showplace Theater. That's it. It's not just a window. It's all behind there. So um, it'd be like a lifeboat in the Titanic. Um, However, what I got to do at the Puppet Showplace Theater was so interesting. Um, I was their marketing and media outreach intern, which meant that I was in charge of making ads, posting ads, doing guerrilla marketing campaigns. I would go out on the streets sometimes and just put up flyers everywhere, you know, stop people with kids in strollers and be like, hey, like, do you want to come to this puppet show? It's really fun. It's, you know, developmental playtime for kids and see, you know, what they would say. Um, I was also in charge of contacting schools, which they do a lot of field trips, um, you know, kind of reaching out to different superintendents and saying, hey, like, do you guys want to come to these field trips? You know, they're educational, they're fun, it's all subsidized, so your kids can pretty much go for free because we're a nonprofit. Um, and I learned a lot of how to be a good marketing and media outturn. But more importantly, what I learned when I was there was that I would rather be at a place where I can make a difference and where I can you know, be involved and engaged and be helping than at a place where I'm not needed and I'm kind of hurtful to the cause. The MFA has over 100 volunteers that do what I was doing. The Puppet Showplace Theater has five full-time employees. That's it. It's thousands of people to a staff of five. And the difference that that made was something I hadn't even realized you know, was important to me before I started. That I wanted to be somewhere where I had the freedom and the opportunity to be helpful and take on more responsibility versus an institution that's amazing, but is full of red tape and people with so many college degrees and experience and just expertise that I wasn't going to be able to do anything. And one of the other really cool things that came out of being at a place that was so small was that I could tell them, hey, this is what I'm interested in and these are my skills and, you know, let me help you. Something that was not listed on my application or my job criteria at all was photography. And that ended up being, I don't know, maybe half of the time I spent there was taking photographs of their shows and putting them in ads and, you know, kind of having that help them out. They'd never had a photographer come in before. And, um, these are some of the photographs I took at the bottom of different shows. I probably have about a thousand and more on my computer at home. And um, another interesting thing that was happening there was just good timing and good luck on my part. They were in the middle of rebranding their theater, which is when you 
kind of try and get a new market and you know refresh yourself. They got a new logo. They were repainting the interior and the exterior. They were reaching out to people they'd never reached out to before. And because it was such a small work environment and I had so much more flexibility, I was able to finagle my way into some of their rebranding and restaffing meetings, which is just you know kind of unheard of for an intern to get to sit in on these really confidential, amazing, but informative talks. And also one other thing I learned about nonprofits has to do really specifically with the climate of the economy when I was working. In 2007 and 2008, before the um, recession hit, a typical nonprofit might have a um, profit breakdown of about 80% or 60% grants and donations and 40% programming. So 60% of their income is just donations. And you know, if they're a nonprofit and they apply to different state-run subsidiaries and grants, that's where they're coming in from. And 40% of what they're making is from ticket sales and programs that they run. But when the economy goes bad and the grants dry up, you are not going to be able to get the kind of grants and donations that you were when there was a surplus of money. So for the Puppet Showplace Theater, their breakdown in 2014 looked a little bit more like 80% um, programming and 20% grants and donations. But the really interesting thing was that in 2007, they were working with a budget of about $300,000. And in 2014, 2014, their budget was about 450000 So how do you go from getting in less money and coming out with a budget where you're making you know, almost a quarter more of what you were? And the answer to that is taking on more interns and having a really dedicated staff. I saw my boss at the MFA maybe once a week because she wasn't there very often. I saw my boss at Puppet Show Place Theater like all the time. She was there every single day. She was there on the weekend. She was there you know, super late at night. And their whole staff was kind of taking on extra positions and extra opportunities. My boss had never worked with puppets before. And by her second year working there, she was running her own puppet show on Wednesday for infants so that they could make more programming. And that was another thing that I hadn't realized I cared about, seeing people that really legitimately want their theater to survive and will do everything they can to get their company to stay. Another size comparison, the MFA's budget is 554 million per year. So in conclusion, the things I learned from my internship, I would rather be responsible and involved than an underutilized staff member. It was easy working at the MFA, but it was so painfully boring, and I didn't realize I cared. Um, I learned a really good lesson in self-advocacy, how I had to get out there and say, I'm capable of this. I love photography. I want to sit in on your staff meeting about 800 times before someone would let me. Community outreach and present is paramount. That was one of the most important things I loved about Showplace Theater. I mean, you would never believe the difference that we would get in show numbers from days where we went out and hit the street and put up flyers to days that we didn't. You know, it feels like when you're going out there and you're doing all of that, that you're reaching nobody. But then sometimes someone will come in and say, hey, I saw your flyer in Whole Foods, and I decided, you know, hey, I have two kids. I'm going to come. And that's such a great feeling to realize that something you're doing is directly related to people coming in. And the last thing was, you know, I just, my boss and all of the other staff there, they were talent, and they were working so hard. They were taking on extra hours without any pay. They were creating puppet shows. They were, you know, spending hours trying to find a contractor who would come in and do the floor and redo the ceilings when they were falling apart. And, um, you know, everything I learned there, I think, is a really important lesson to take with me. Not just in there, you know, in the puppet showplace theater and the MFA working, but all of the things that I saw everyone else do to get it to stay in its condition.